Hello and welcome to Cultivated World, the channel that brings you the good stuff from the world of watches. It's that time of year again. No, not Christmas, but new Rolex time. Let's jump straight in and take a look at all the notable new releases from Rolex this year. With the general trend of watches increasing in size, even within the Rolex range, I think we were a little bit surprised to see the Explorer in 39mm being replaced by a smaller 36mm model. I mean, it brings it more back in line with the original that was launched in honour of the first ascent of Mount Everest, which will go some way to pleasing the purists. But one thing purists won't agree with is the introduction of the Rolosaur Explorer in steel and yellow gold. We actually speculated about an Everose Gold Explorer 2 in our predictions video, but not a precious metal Explorer. I'm not too sure I understand the logic behind this model, and I can see this Explorer encroaching upon the Rolosaur Datejust models. By far and above, the most speculated release for this year was the new Explorer 2, and here it is. No, just kidding. This is actually the discontinued model, but they look almost identical. We were all hoping for a special configuration for its 50th anniversary. We even based our prediction video on this idea, but Rolex had other ideas. Much like the differences on the new Submariner from last year, the new Explorer 2 seems to have a more refined shape, which looks like has been created by increasing the size of the bracelet and putting the lugs on a small diet. Although this is an improvement, the lugs on the outgoing Explorer 2 didn't have as much of an overhang as the outgoing Submariner, so the difference is less notable. As with all new Rolex models, there is now a coronet at the 6 o'clock position but by far the biggest change is under the hood. The Explorer 2 now features the calibre 3285 movement, which increases the power reserve from 48 hours to 70 hours. This is the same movement used in the GMT Master 2, and brings us neatly onto the next release. If you wanted a GMT Master 2 with an Oyster bracelet, you had to go precious metal. Well, not anymore. Both the black and blue bezel and the red and blue bezel versions of the GMT Master 2 are now available with an Oyster bracelet. I know this is a very popular move by Rolex, and will only feel the Jubilee versus Oyster bracelet debate. I am a fan of both bracelets and can see a place for both. What do you guys think? I'm unsure how this will affect the lead time for these models, now that there are essentially twice as many options in steel. This also doesn't mean that there will be more supply of steel GMT watches. I wouldn't be surprised if Rolex produces the same amount of bezels and simply splits them between the two bracelet options. We'll just have to wait and see. Actually, it would have been interesting to have seen the Rolex or GMT Master 2 with a Jubilee bracelet. Well, Rolex has given us that on the Sky Dweller. Now, I know I said I like the Jubilee bracelet. However, I think it has limited appeal on the Sky Dweller. If you've ever seen the Sky Dweller in the metal, you'll know how much the bezel sparkles in the light. It's mesmerizing and glorious to see. Add a sparkly 21mm Jubilee bracelet to that 42mm fluted bezel and it may be a bit overkill for some. However, in my mind, the Jubilee bracelet on the Sky Dweller makes more sense than the Oyserflex bracelet which was added to the Sky Dweller last year. Surprisingly, the two watches most fitting for the Oysterflex bracelet, the Submariner and the Sea Dweller, don't have it as an option. Go figure. Rolex have introduced the option of a meteorite dial across the gold metal Daytona range. 
Initially, I was never a fan of meteorite dials. To my eyes, they just looked like a mess with all those irregular patterns. However, this is definitely something that you have to see in person. And once I had the opportunity to get up close and personal with one, I quickly changed my mind. As the dial is created by maintaining the characteristics of the raw material, each meteorite dial has its own patterns and its unique character. One thing to note, you will be asked to pay a £3,550 premium to have this space rock in your Daytona. That would be US dollars for our friends from across the pond. So you really have to like this watch if you're going to choose this option. Rolex have also introduced some new dial designs on the Datejust 36. The most distinctive being the dial with the foliage pattern, which I've already heard being described as the jungle dial or the cannabis dial. I do like this style. It's completely different from anything else in the Rolex lineup. However, it is very feminine and definitely one for the ladies. The second new entry on the Datejust 36 is this geometric design dial that resembles the ridges on a fluted bezel. It's not a bad design, but it's nothing groundbreaking and is another safe play from Rolex. This design is definitely more androgynous than the marijuana dial, and I can certainly see Rolex introducing this on the Datejust 41 in the future. One of my all-time favourite dials is the so-called Wimbledon dial, with the green highlighted Roman numerals, which has now been introduced on the Datejust 36. We've included a link to our review of this dial in the details below and in the top corner so be sure to check this video out afterwards. The day date has also seen the introduction of a few new dials, most of which will fly under the radar. Not this bad boy though. This is the new Eisen Kiesel dial, which is a natural quartz material with a reddish brown hue. Just like the meteorite dials on the Daytonas, these will feature irregular patterns, making each dial unique. Again, this isn't for everyone, but if it's your thing, I'm sure you will absolutely love it. I can't wait to see one of these in real life. In fact, I would go as far as to say that the Eisen Kiesel dial is the highlight of the show. It's Rolex pushing the boundaries and trying something different. Admittedly, it wouldn't be my first choice out of the new releases, if at all. And although Rolex will sell countless more steel GMTs, Jubilee bracelet sky dwellers, and meteorite Daytonas, as new releases go, they are comparatively boring. What do you think of the new 2021 releases from Rolex? And what is your highlight from the showcase? Let us know your thoughts in the comments section below. We thank you very much for watching and if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, like and subscribe and remember to hit that bell icon.